Welcome back to Risque Business News. I'm your host, Laura. And I'm May. And today we are talking a, a we're just going to do a hodgepodge episode of a few different topics. Yes. Um, what do you got? I have a mystery steakhouse here oh. in New York City that really? is one of the most exclusive restaurants, let's call it, in the world. Is it Soho House? <laughs> Soho House. No. <laughs> we're talking Mehron Steakhouse and I'll tell you all about it in the episode. Okay, cool. Um, I have a few different things. We're talking illegal steroids being sold to teenagers. You love to see it. Good. Um, beer sales with Trump's mugshot on them skyrocketing, as oh, you I'll... can imagine. And this is our podcast sponsor <laughs> for today. And I'm going to round it out with a big old bummer for you all. We're going to talk about the murder of a Baltimore CEO. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's ride. All right. Well, enjoy. Where's the money? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand how you make money. Hold on. That, Two stand-up comics in New York City. Just learned a lot of this stuff. I'm going to ask all the stupid questions that you might be thinking at home, but are afraid to ask people. Making it to where you feel like you're too stupid to be able to ever engage in it, they win. Why the fuck are they doing this? <laughs> it's to make money. It's risque business news. Pretty fired up for, for my little story today. This is one of those ones where... I was really hoping I wasn't going to uncover some like bullshit. Yeah. And then there was no bullshit. It's no, wait, just, there was no bullshit. It's just a wholesome story. What? Really? I mean, there's there's twists and turns. Don't you worry. But there's no evil. That's and shocking. that is shocking. <laughs> there's <laughs> almost always a bad guy. I was actually recently on um, this show called Sports Talk Primetime. I think that's yeah, what it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a- Aton Drex. Yeah, with Friends Aton Levine and, and Drexton Clemens. Um, if you want to check them out. But anyway, I was on this pod, and they were like, "So from doing the p- your podcast." It wasn't a pod, it was a show. But I was like, from they were like, from doing your podcast, what what have you learned about business? And I was like, that everyone is a crook. All of them. Uh, but by the way, they said they were like, in the beginning, they were like, don't say anything bad about like Jeff Bezos or whatever. Oh, Cause it's boy. an Amazon thing. They were like, what do you have to do to be rich? I was like, be, have no conscience, be a sociopath. <laughs> I was like, if you just like have no morals whatsoever, you can be a billionaire. Gonna, it's going to be great for yeah. sure. You're so gonna... I just came out the bat swinging at Jeff Bezos by accident. <laughs> totally on a, by accident. On a, I want to stress this live, live. broadcast straight to the to the airwaves yes. out there i didn't so i'm swear. sure there was a the couple people in the background just like god <laughs> oh, they, they were swearing they're like fucking <laughs> yeah. may sorry jeff <laughs> sorry jeff oh, that's all right it's not a hot take i'm sure he's heard worse i'm <laughs> sure he's heard worse yeah okay so tell me about this uh should we start with the steakhouse Sure, let's talk, let's start with the steakhouse. How do we get tickets? Is this something that we can get into? Oh, well, that funny you should ask. Okay, so if you're familiar with this story, over the last couple of days, the New York Times actually published this, and they go, the most exclusive fake steakhouse in New York City. So oh. immediately I was like, well, what are we talking about? Like, it's not really steak. Like, is it like impossible meat? Like, what <laughs> like are... Human yeah. meat. Human. Is this a weird <laughs> serial killer situation? <laughs> so I looked into it and essentially you could go on this website. It's like very bare bones. We actually can, you know, pull up and you can see it's just all you can do is put in your reservation request and there has the address. It actually doesn't even have the address. It says Upper East Side. Uh, you've heard about it. Now come live our revolutionary steak experience. Hmm. This is not a real restaurant. Okay. It is actually a hacker house, which is occupied by 16, 20 somethings who work in the tech industry. First of all, a hacker house. Have you heard this concept? I have whole? no idea what the fuck you're it's talking about. It's so funny. Is it like a TikTok house, but they're all just hacking? Yes. Okay. Ba- <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Like basically, actually. Really? Okay. Also, it's so funny to me because they're like, yeah, we're all in this four bedroom brownstone together and we work and we live here. But it's a hacker house. And I'm like, isn't that just roommates? <laughs> roommates slash a cult. Slash you have friends. Yeah. That's what people who don't work in tech would call friendship. Right. You live you in are- a place. You hang out with people. You enjoy each other's company. You have common interests. It's a friendship. 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 <laughs> well, apparently these guys were friends and would occasionally have dinner together like friends do. Okay. And one of the guys, Miron, was famous within his friend group for making steaks for the group. Okay. So they went on Google Maps and they labeled their place as Miron's Steakhouse. And then, which, because you could just do that, by the way, which, by the way, we should make this uh, location Risque Business News. We should. Yeah. Oh, that's so smart. Would be okay. so fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then we can have you guys leave reviews there as well because you guys have been so good about doing that. Thank you for the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> but basically they go and they they make a Google Maps situation and then all their friends started leaving these five-star reviews, which is hilarious to me. Uh, the first one goes, steak was by far the most exquisite I've had in New York City. Five stars. Great food, better service. The last time I felt so cared for was in my mother's womb. <laughs> That's funny. People were describing it as like a hidden gem and life-changing. And then about Mayron himself, they go, he's not just a chef. He's a visionary, a genius, <laughs> a god among men. <laughs> Fantastic steak and venison. Maron walked into the, ki- the restaurant at the start of the night, drenched in blood, carrying, oh a f- <laughs> carrying a freshly killed deer that he had just caught in the forest upstate. He then prepared it in the kitchen and made it an unforgettable meal. Delicious. Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> So did a bunch of influencers be like, I got to get into this steakhouse? Because that's so funny. A hundred percent. So so all of a sudden, Maron's Steakhouse is listed on the Upper East Side. It's just a brownstone that a couple guys live in. A couple has, of friends live in. Yeah, like it, as roommates. Know, you know, maybe 20 to 50 reviews or so. Like they like send it a couple group chats. People leave five stars. And it has a 4.9 rating. So one asshole friend was like, four stars. Fuck, this <laughs> Fuck that guy. He didn't. Like, he slept with my girlfriend. Yeah, right. And so people in the Upper East Side were starting to be like, oh my God, there's this like really well-rated steakhouse when I search <laughs> steak. Like we got to try to go. And they put up this fake website or it's a real website and started collecting people's information and they got like 500 requests. Oh no. And people started calling them and stuff like that. Now all of a sudden they were like, oh fuck, like we've got like an actual atten- eyes on us, which heightened when there's a community newsletter in New York called Cafe Annie which maybe we should contact Annie yeah. Cadet to see if she would like to do the pod because this is fucking hilarious. So she's a journalist. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, I think, used to work for the Wall Street Journal. Journal, And now she does Cranes, the New York's business, whatever. So maybe she would want to do it. And she's like a normal, she's a job. And yeah. one of the things that she likes to do is like just human interest stories in New York City. Oh, love that. What yes. a dream job. Yeah. So she got told by one of her listeners, hey, there's this like steakhouse, but it, like think, we think it's fake but it has really good reviews and they won't let me in. Most importantly, <laughs> most importantly, they, won't most let me importantly in. they should just open it and then they could have like a little like dinner party in that. Yeah. I well, so Annie cadet, she went and she was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to look into this. And that's when she, <laughs> one of the people who wrote in read her, read her additional review. We got to meet the head chef Maron. He came over to check on us. Such a nice guy. My friends can only eat halal meat. So he took us to the back and we slaughtered a cow and performed a dua <laughs> prayer together. <laughs> it was a beautiful experience and I can't recommend it enough. It can be hard to get in, but it is well worth it. So she's like, okay, what the fuck is going yeah, on? You're going slaughtering, on slaughtering cows in the Upper East Side of New York City. There's like... There's no way. So she goes up there and she starts asking people about it and she finds out who owns the building Yeah. and she emails them and <laughs> like a really nice long email. It's like, Oh my God, I think like someone's doing like a joke or something out of your building. And the, the person replies back and goes, this is a private home. I don't know who is using my address to falsely advertise something <laughs> <laughs> real buzzkill. Okay. Jeez. So then she posts the story on her blog. Like that's basically what she posted. Yeah. And she gets reached out to by, Maron himself. Oh, wow. Maron reaches out to her and turns out he no longer lives in New York. He actually moved to San Francisco and he's a startup founder out there and, you know, hence the hacker house and stuff like that. He said that they were about to do a really elaborate prank, but he needed her to pull her story down for a little while while they do this prank. So she agrees to do that and she just like wants to. She has no idea what the prank's going to be though. They they walk her through it basically. What they wanted to do was they created this wait list and they had at that point 500, which eventually grew to over a thousand people on this wait list. Damn. People, fucking New Yorkers. I know. They love waiting in a line. They love. Exclusivity. Love it. They love if they're. They're obsessed with inclusivity, but then they're also, they love an exclusive club. Right. They're like (laughs) a hacker house. I don't want to live with anyone who can't code. Right. That is my requirement. You can be any race, any gender, any weight, any whatever. But if you can't code, I don't want to fuck with you. <laughs> He's like, we're going to actually do this as a real steakhouse for a night with these thousand, the thousand people that we have on this list. 
Um, so they're just going to give it to like, I don't know, 10 random ass people on the list or how does that work? Well, what they ended up doing is they like went fucking full. They popped their full pussy oh into boy. this thing. Okay. She thinks that she's like, okay, fine. I'll take my, my story down for a little while, but I'm, I don't think you're going to be able to pull anything off like of substance. Yeah. Like I feel like it's just kind of going away. And then a couple months later, she gets a text from them and goes, hey, we have updates on the steakhouse that we need to discuss with you. On Saturday, September 23rd, so a few weeks ago, we are going to have our our first and at this point only <laughs> evening. <laughs> what they went and did is they rented an event space and they had got a, like a temporary liquor license from the city. Um, oh, wow. So they just opened a restaurant. They basically opened a, a restaurant like a for the night, but they didn't let anyone know that it was like a pop-up restaurant. So everyone was under the impression that they had finally gotten a reservation at Miron's. Oh, wow. And they were like, oh, fuck yeah. Like I've been waiting mo- like months and months and months and months, months to go. And they had like several hundred people, I think, that were able to actually come in there. Holy maybe, shit. I don't know. If, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's not. It was it was like a significant qu- like amount of people. I mean, that's crazy. So they, and, these random hackers just learned how to own and operate a fucking restaurant. A fucking restaurant <laughs> for, for an evening. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And he... That, that would make a restaurant tour so mad, probably. Oh, be, my God. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. And apparently, these guys are also, like, really young. And they're not exactly, like... They're startup founders. They haven't, like, done, like... They're not steakhouse connoisseurs. Right. How would so they, they like, hadn't even gone to steakhouses <laughs> really <laughs> like, they guy was Peter Lugers ma- once with their dad on a business trip yeah. 10 years ago. Exactly. So they were like, we have to go. We have to go to a steakhouse <laughs> and, like, figure out, like, what we're supposed to do. So they went to, what's that one? Um, Steak, like, STK. STK, yeah, They went yeah. there, and then they went to, like, one other one and, like, grilled their poor wait staff. They oh, my like, God. Listen, you've got to tell me literally everything about how you do your job. The also, guys like, specifically STK, they're like, I don't know, man. I'm just some hot girl that got, like, hired for so bottle cool. service. I don't fucking know, Exactly. Dude. Like, this isn't actually a serious establishment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you ever been to Peter Luger's? No, I haven't. Yeah, Have I you? went once with Mark. I don't know why. But I think it was like for like one of his birthdays or something. Yeah. He's like, I don't even like steakhouses. And I was like, well, great. But anyway, I, yeah. it was so expensive. It was ridiculously expensive. But they, they all are. It's, it's very, insane. Yeah, it's very much so like you walk in and I feel like the... It was like Dick's Last Resort. Like all the waiters were like trained to be like, oh, this is Brooklyn and we're going to shit talk you. And like, I don't oh. know. And shit like, I was like, okay, we like enough with the shtick. We literally live in Manhattan. Like relax. Yeah. Cause yeah. They, I guess they're probably almost exclusively tourists that go in there. I'm sure. Yeah. I haven't even, I've been to, I think I've, we've, we've talked a lot about this. My, my job at work is steak. Steak. Yeah, that your is what is I do steak. at my job is go to steakhouses with clients um, which is funny because I like steak fine, but I, it's kind of like the worst meal for a Tuesday. Yeah. You know, and you're always just like randomly you know, like, cool. I'm the heaviest. <laughs> this is the heaviest meal. I will. Th- it'll take me three. Even if I have no drinks, no alcohol, I will be hungover yes. tomorrow from this meal. Yeah. Perfect. And it usually goes for about five hours. I swear every steakhouse meal is a billion hours. Yep. Wow, it is a long occasion. Occasionally it can be fun. And I do yeah. love the oysters out the gate. I went to um I think it's called Dean's Steakhouse or something. Like it's a really famous one where a mobster got murdered out of it. That's like bonus oh. points for your steakhouse. That you is gotta huge. Have a bo- you do wanna you want someone to die. You want at least one or two murders outside mm-hmm. of your steakhouse mm-hmm. and pictures of the murder, like literally the grisly crime Absolutely. scene in right when you walk in. That's a good steakhouse. <laughs> but <laughs> um You want the mob to be run out of your steakhouse. Right. You want them to be having an active like meeting. sit down meeting <laughs> at all times they all should th- honestly like if i owned a, a steakhouse i would just hire some sopranos ass looking people to be oh, like can yeah. you just come and sit here we'll like we'll give you two meals a day but like yeah, it really yeah, adds to the ambiance here and then just kind of like look uh, intimidating look intimidating and very loudly plot a murder <laughs> <laughs> i would be so hyped yeah. so hyped <laughs> It's like, dude, I think they're. I think that's the fucking mob right yeah, there. This yeah. is a nice place. This is a nice place. Yeah. Five stars. I would write that review. I would say they have real mobsters and everything. Yeah, this is huge. It's pretty good. But yeah, um, of course, from Ohio, would adore that. <laughs> <laughs> but I went to that one, and uh, we, it was like during a time where I was doing a lot of blow, <laughs> and I it's had. Like, I am not hungry for steak. Yeah, I literally had. I've spent probably like two hundred fucking dollars and had one bite. Yep, it was insane. Oh, that's yes. my story about that. And then <laughs> I was talking about it recently with this girl that was there. And I was like, remember when we spent $200 to spend an hour and a half in the bathroom of Dean's Steakhouse? <laughs> like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, we should go to a steakhouse. Yeah, we should. It's good. I don't know. It's fun. like a martini, a, mar- a steakhouse, oh. and then like steak fries and a side of like it's broccoli so, or sauteed. It's so chaotic. It's great. It'd be it'd be way more fun to go with like my my friends than with clients. I some yeah. of my clients are cool, but a lot of them are not. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> just the way it is. Just the way. So it then is. you're here and you're like, all right. Yeah. I know. How is yours cooked? I oh, have- it's really good. <laughs> yeah, New York has great steakhouses. <laughs> I have the luxury of working in my industry, so I actually do enjoy my... That's so nice. Yeah, it's lovely. It's That's like so girls nice. that we would be friends with normally. Totally. That's huge. And mm-hmm. like, listen, I do... Well, there's a lot of cool people in my industry, but there's a lot of... <laughs> I work in security. Right. What do we do? We get it. We get it. Okay. So anyway, so they have to go and like figure out how to pull this all together. And they booked this event space. They even went and got... I don't know how they did this, but they got a 212 area code phone number for their reservation line. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is really... So if you don't know what that is, 212 is like the the New York City, like old school... Yeah. Reser- like, or not reservation, phone number, right, area code. Um, I would love one of those. I will never have one. No. Mine is Mine is Dallas. Mine is 214. Oof. I know. You hate to see that. You hate to see that. I brief... Like, I got my phone number when my parents briefly moved there, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me. Why, I, why I didn't like think that one through, but now I'll have it for the rest of my goddamn life. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's yours? Southern Massachusetts 508. Uh, that's not bad. Yeah. It's that's not bad. Fine. Dallas is, is not a good one. Yeah. Sorry. They got health permits and they had to buy 40 pounds of veal, eight dozen bottles of wine and a hundred pounds of steak. For they, for the prefix menu, obviously. Where are they getting this menu. money? Are they just rich? I think, they must have gotten like I mean they have a lot of people who are in on it like being like their friends that were like part of the yeah part of the gig but so they still, probably did some sort of like crowd Venmo situation like and like yeah but and I fuck. know that they knew <laughs> that they were pretty sure that they were going to be able to fill it up because yeah. they had those thousand people who wanted to get on the reservation like were waiting for a reservation yeah so it's like an investment but I don't know I mean I would if someone was doing like a big prank like that I'd throw I'd throw some money at it and be like that's the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard. I would want to go though. I'd be like, do I get to eat the I want to go. I'm guessing well here so here's what happened. So it's a hundred fourteen dollar prefix menu that they were putting together. And none of these people were chefs. They'd barely been to steakhouses, period. They knew nothing about this. And it was Maron and then his two other like co conspirators, Riley Walls and Daniel Egan. And the three of them are just cooking up a thousand million gajillion yeah. steaks. Yeah. Oh, they're they're busy. <laughs> they're having an evening. They all well. They also got sixty friends to volunteer, so okay. they needed like coat check, hostesses. And like they like- wanted it to look like a real fucking steakhouse. Damn, these people are popular. I I know. First of all, I was like, yeah. okay. 60 friends. 60 friends? Are you nuts? I don't even know 60 people. Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> Did you pay them? And my favorite part is they put up fake photos of Maron with celebrities. Oh my <laughs> God. So this is him with Marilyn Monroe. That's so funny. He's just like a 23 year old dude. That's amazing. That's so funny. <laughs> and there are all these like black and white pictures that they put up around the entire place. They hired a string quartet. Uh, to play the entire evening doing covers of like Lady Gaga, Toto, and Rick Astley. Yeah, and these people are like, they got some nice taste. I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I was like, it's, it's fun. <laughs> and everyone was like dressed up. So people were in like business casual to potentially, like a couple people were even in like more formal evening oh wear. God, that's so funny. The course of the evening. So they didn't tell any of the people attending these this event, like attending that this wasn't a real steakhouse. So they were really, Obvious. yeah, of course, really trying to keep the ruse up. So they. <laughs> they had their friends go outside of the steakhouse and pretend like Drake was coming. Oh my God. And had all of these signs about like, uh, one of the girls says, I need a one dance, (laughs) like (laughs) trying to get like pictures with Drake or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Which is hilarious to me. And then they did a fake proposal with two of the people. Oh my God. In the course of the evening. This is so elaborate. It was really well done. (laughs) And then the actual experience. So the girl who runs this blog that like kind of got connected in the first place and was part of the reason that Maron decided to do this, she got invited to come with a plus one. 
And when she went, so they, they were like the only people who like knew what right. was going on. Oh my God. That'd be so fascinating. This yes. is such a fun story. I know. Isn't it? It's like yeah. the fucking cutest thing I've ever heard. So they go there and they're talking to their waiter. Who's like, who's like a fucking grad student. Yeah, just a <laughs> random ass bitch. Just a random dude, which to be fair, most waiters are. Like, yeah, that's true. Like, I don't know. Like, well, actually no, grad not at steakhouses. houses. Grad students are actors. Yeah. yeah. I feel like at steak houses, there's like people that have been a waiter for like 40 years at the same place. Totally. And they're like, good. Oh, they're very good. They like do they like do. The, the clean the crumbs yeah. off the table situation. They're very good. There's sommelier. Like they had like a fake sommelier. Oh the my guy. god, that's apparently just... he was struggling to open the wine bottles. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, totally. In the conversation, he was telling the waiter. Their waiter was telling them, "Oh yeah, we have a number of locations in New York, thirteen across the Americas, and about a hundred in Iran." Mm-hmm. And they're like, "I didn't know Iran was big for steakhouses." And you go, "Oh yes, that's our homeland. We're proud of our Persian heritage." Myself, I'm a descendant of Cyrus the Great, King of Kings in Persia. Holy shit! And then her. And where people just like. Yeah, he goes. God, New Yorkers. The, the blogger goes. We're familiar. <laughs> We're familiar. That's so funny. <laughs> oh my god. So the prefix menu that they ended up serving was uh, the bovine circle of life, which started with a spring meadow salad, which represented birth, and ended with angel food and devil's food cake, marking the afterlife. This is a really well thought it's, out concept. I'm like, I'm obsessed with this whole thing. And These then people should think about go, opening a restaurant for real. They go, if you want a non-alcoholic beverage, we'd recommend the tall glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Sponsored by Big Dairy. <laughs> Kills me. That's and look at this. Look at this. So this is what the menu like. This is what all the pictures of the the food comes out as. It, it looks, looks good. Legit. It looks pretty good. I mean, it definitely looks like homemade, but it looks legit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, you're totally right. Like yeah. the plating's not awesome, but considering that they had to make it for everybody. This is so insane. It's so funny to me. One guy who had no idea he was not in on it. So he was like being, giving like a real review. Like someone yeah. came up to him after was he had left, like was exiting and was like, oh, how did you like it? Like we want to like get your experience. And he goes, oh, it was artsy. Artsy? And he said it was like a cross between a steakhouse and MoMA. <laughs> and he goes what? he goes this is a place that's gonna blow up oh my gosh <laughs> fucking People, new yorkers new yorkers are so cringe dude they I really do. are because they don't they just want to f- look cool absolutely and here's the thing about like i know about me a hundred percent i would have been right there with this guy i would have been yeah. like no this is like this was a this was nice like, yeah <laughs> this was good i'm like, gonna brag to my friends that absolutely I went to oh i'd be texting i'd be fucking putting it on my story Oh my god, so, that's so funny. And also the so plates funny. are like mismatched. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean they're they're trying their best. I think they did a really good job considering. And here's the thing, if they did another one, I would totally go. It's kind of Absolutely. annoying because it's like now the ruse is up a little bit. Right. Well a little now bit. Now it's, it's just like you're going up. to like a bad restaurant. Now I'm just going to a pop up restaurant run by kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Buy a bunch of golden retrievers and you know trench coats. Yeah, or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I, here's the thing about me: I'd still fucking go. Oh my. Of course, I would go. That would be so fun. That'd be a really good night. I would love. I to I mean, do think that. about the lengths that they would have to go through. Because did they have to get like a health inspection? Did they, they have did. To- this is like really elaborate. And they said and that. And it's such a weird prank because like, oh, we're pranking people by giving them a delicious meal. By like serving them a nice meal, which is part of the reason the, the lady, when she found out like what they were going to do, yeah. was okay with taking down her, her right. thing. Because she was like, it's it's a nice, or it's a nice just story. just doing a pop-up. We're restaurant. doing a little pop-up restaurant. It'll be a cute, like it's New York. It's, it's not yeah. like the $114 is like going to these people they're dumb like yeah just don't worry about them the new york times ended up covering it so it got a lot of coverage over the weekend because everyone was just like isn't that just the cutest thing yeah <laughs> and it is it is adorable miron i will come to your steakhouse any day not any day on a day that on a day that i have me. nothing else going on exactly but yeah i'll be there too that sounds awesome so funny i would like to do i actually um one time I went to this like supper. There's a, there was a couple that was trying to be- start this like supper, supper club. club. I've always yeah. wanted to be in the mix on like a supper club. If anyone yeah, cool. that listens to this podcast is part of a supper club or something like that in New York and it's fun, please yeah. let me know. Cause I, I, like, that, that. I want to make that part of my life. <laughs> yeah. Why not? But that's one of my favorite things about Judaism is the, is the suppers. They do their, the Friday night with, Oh yeah. my God. I know. What's it called? Oh, uh, and Seder. No. 
not Passover Seder. It's that's obviously. I'm Easter. literally going on um, birthright time. <laughs> is um, for, you're going on. Birthright. I'm li- literally going on birthright. <laughs> Have we talked about this on the pod yet? Yeah, I think we've mentioned this. Anyway, I'm going on. It's in February, so we'll we'll st- dig back into that. Friday Jewish meal. So I definitely need to start learning what these are called. Uh, Shabbat. 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 Yeah, yeah. That concept fucking adore it oh yeah it's great I, all i want is a shabbat yeah that's all that great idea basically mm-hmm. if you're not familiar it's when they have friday night dinner with a bunch shabbat. of friends. <laughs> shabbat i'm gonna be hosting shabbat they're doing shabbat <laughs> i'm doing shabbat that's my version and we're having tex-mex okay <laughs> oh that sounds great yeah. tex-mex with some holla oh amazing <laughs> a little guac come on <laughs> yeah so that's a story so did people like it they had a couple people, I think, like, were a little pissed off. And then I think... Pissed like, off? Why? There were a few people who... Because New Yorkers also don't like to make them like feel they stupid. Don't, yeah, that's true. And think about like it's the Upper East Side. You're going to get a few ornery folk up there. Yeah, yeah. So there were a true. few people who weren't like thrilled about the entire thing. And they were like, this restaurant sucks. Yes. Yeah. Um, but then there were a lot of people who, especially once they realized what was going on, were like, oh, that's like, adorable. Yeah. And they were like, I mean, I've... I've spent money on stupider shit right. for sure. And it was a nice evening out and, you know, And the food cute. didn't, the food looked edible for sure. The food looked fine. Looked Some fine. people did send it back. Did they? Yeah. But I think to be fair, that probably happens at Peter Luger's too. That's true. That's <laughs> I'm true. pretty sure these people are, yeah. I feel like out of all, maybe this is stupid to say, but I feel like out of all the things to cook, steak is kind of easy because it's like you just... Syrup. I would agree with you, but I also am not over here cooking steak, so yeah. I can't actually tell you that with like experience to back yeah, it up. No. I fucking love a steak in the air fryer. Try it; mm. it's very good. In the air fryer? In the air fryer. What? Yes. How does it? That sounds terrible. It's so juicy. It's delicious. Does it like crisp? No. Oh, what the fuck? You would <laughs> <laughs> don't do one of these. Like you could, you <laughs> don't start May's Steakhouse. <laughs> You're just air you frying dude. hundreds of steaks. <laughs> Everyone's like, mmm. <laughs> you know what I thought would be a good business idea, and I'm shocked it doesn't exist. Why the fuck is there not a restaurant where everything is air fried? So just like because air they- fried. <laughs> like right? It sounds great. For obvious <laughs> reasons. Why is it? What do you mean? Well, everything is air fried. Yeah, know. you can have like air fried I don't potato think- chips, air fried, whatever. I have it. genuinely never seen air fried at a restaurant. Yeah, ever. You should. There should be air fried everything. I, mean, I don't know. Just air fried less is- oil. You know? There is less oil. That's fine. I don't know. People just don't care that much. I think if you're like going out to eat, you've accepted that you're you're getting some extra cows. That's true. I but you can start this. Listen, yeah. don't let me rain on your parade. You got this, girl. I don't know what it is about older people too, but like my mom is so against the air fryer. She that, thinks it's like it's cheating, so f- and I'm like, who cares? I made her and her parents and Mark's parents salmon in the air fryer once, and like when the, I told them it was coming out of the air fryer, they were like, like giving each pissed. other looks. They were like, was it good? I mean. No, it, was kind of, it, was like, <laughs> it wasn't that good, but it was because of the sauce that I put it in. That wasn't that good. It was uh, like a, it was like a soy miso glaze. See, and meanwhile, I didn't get the proportions I'm over right. here doing the oven with the salmon and the salmon oven. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'm with I'm, I'm with the boomers on this one. <laughs> you don't use your air fryer. For I meats? never use my air fryer. Are you kidding me? You never use it. You, but I put also, a steak in there. You're going to be fucking shocked. All right. Go ahead and toss a steak in there. I'll toss a steak. I was thinking about making shrimp in there. That makes more sense to me because it's like. Actually, no, it no, doesn't. No, it doesn't make no, any it sense. No, it fucking doesn't. No, none of this makes sense. The only thing I can understand is like a chicken wing situation. I'm like telling something, you, dude. And then potatoes. A potato situation. You're uh, missing out. You're, you've never been more wrong. Okay. I've, <laughs> I have. <laughs> um, speaking of things that are wrong and yeah. shouldn't happen, TikTok right now is promoting. TikTok as a whole. TikTok as a fucking whole. <laughs> because the dopamine in my brain can't handle it anymore no okay? i'm i'm not well it's fried it's completely fucked yeah i mean i would like to know the long-term effects of tiktok on the brain because it feels like bad bad it's see. gonna be like meth and then tiktok <laughs> like which one is worse for you i can't really tell probably speaking of oh. by the way i've been watching the new season of intervention on netflix wow have they upped the ante okay how how, how does one up the ante in oh that? my god and then in a show about drug intervention it's insane so first of all they're all based in in uh vegas for some reason they've just like a lot of zeroed drugs in there. on there and um the it starts out with a banger okay where the mom 
the daughter and two siblings in this family of like eight are all addicted and they're all living in this house together and the dad's paying for it but the dad lives down the street it's crazy so so everyone in the family is addicted to drugs basically except for the 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 saddest thing i've ever heard it was insane oh my god yeah so that's what i spent my day in vegas man yeah (laughs) keep them in vegas um okay so back to tiktok um this is a headline from the New York Post. All of my things I get from are from the New I York Post. I adore the New York Post. Um, it's the so only publication. <laughs> they're, they're the most unserious group of people. We've talked about this before. The New York Post shooting from the fucking hip. Oh, I love it. They, it's great. They have, they have a zero draft policy. Straight to print. Straight to print. Everything's going live on the site as they type it. <laughs> so there is a... Um, Do not ask <laughs> one person for a fact check on anything ever that's illegal at the new york post <laughs> so um there's a study by the nonprofit center for countering digital hate wow that's interesting Ooh, what a um, bummer of a job i know right that's saying that tiktok has become a key marketing channel for promoting steroids and other bodybuilding drugs to millions of the site's users including and primarily teenagers <laughs> So. okay so what do they what do they mean by that like in the fact that you look online and you're like that guy's jacked so they're being marketed to young men by influencers who are deliberately saying i guess it's like in the print or whatever they're like if you want to look like captain america you've got to use these drugs and the drugs are illegal and the drugs are illegal um okay. steroids like well, injectable that feels, steroids that feels like a fucking no-brainer for that doesn't even feel like a tiktok issue so much as well it does but also like where's the fucking dr- uh, police <laughs> right the drug enforcement agency should be all over that and just be like hey that's illegal that'd be like if i was like listen if <laughs> you back in the day listen if you want to look as skinny as i do try coke <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> genuinely though yeah <laughs> i mean it's <laughs> kind of akin to what they're saying do they have like a referral link Oh, that I don't know, actually. Okay. Um, I don't really know. It's, I it's do <laughs> I do love the transparency. Here's the thing about me. I'm viewing this with a positive lens. At least they're being honest. Yeah. And they're like, this true. is how you look like this. That's this isn't true. normal. I'm on illegal steroids. Yeah. So you can't look like this 14-year-old boy? No, look at this man. Oh, God. I mean, we're looking at See, a man who has veins popping out of his fucking Yeah, if you're just veins. listening, once again, go on the YouTube and at least just hit the subscribe, hit a like button, you know, give us a, do us a solid. But most importantly, we will have this vid- picture over, over this image right now because uh, over the video and this man, how is he looking in the mirror and is like, this is a good thing. That's the other thing. Like it doesn't look good. And I feel like to counteract this, th- like this nonprofit that looked into this or whatever should just have a bunch of TikToks that say, Hey, you're going to lose your dick. You're also going to die. Gonna a shrink. lot of these guys are dying. Yeah. That too. They're, like, you think like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, but first the dick, the dick is the most important part, obviously. Yeah. But then secondarily his life. Um, no, this guy has his veins are literally fully visible. I think I can see most of the veins in his at body. Least top 10% of his body are sticking out and they are throbbing. And <laughs> Yikes. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whoa. But no one finds this attractive to like PSA to all the people out there. Like there is definitely a line where you're too jacked and it's, listen, it's when your male, veins are trying to escape women. your muscles because your muscles are so big. Your veins are like, no more room here. I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. My, I would never, have you ever dated a guy even remotely? Like, no, God. Yeah. No. Definitely not. Yeah. No, no. that's, that's not a, that's not. And there's a difference between like taking tea and taking this. No, of course. A lot of yeah. people. And also, you know, testosterone is prescribed. Right. Like that's a normal drug that, you know, your body has and people do it. Some people can abuse it. Don't get me wrong. Like anything. But that is a combination of things. And a lot of those guys do actually die. Like their hearts like straight up give out. Yeah, for but real. For obvious reasons. His, like the heart is how much effort the heart has to give Oof. to get those veins to give like they have like an inch off the body. They're like levitating off of his <laughs> body right now. They're going to his skin is going to explode. Yeah, like, for real. Genuinely. Um, like, that's not just testosterone. That's like <laughs> unicorn blood. That's adrenochrome right there. Yeah. <laughs> how do we get our hands on that? Yeah, are you kidding? Um, so <laughs> he's promoting it on his TikTok. Wait, actually, so there's an account that posts under the username Teach Me Roids, lol, uh, <laughs> yeah. that uh, like can h- claims to help young boys biohack their body through puberty 
in order to suppress their estrogen levels. Ooh. He also claims it will increase their height and genital size. That's well, your balls, not your dick. Yeah. It, Isn't that like the whole thing that they're supposed to have? Get, it makes your balls grow. Oh, I thought they shrunk. Oh, does it? I don't know. I just know there's act. There's action with the balls. Yeah, there's action with the <laughs> they're balls. They're responding. <laughs> um, and then also that account holder for Teach Me Roids gives a 10% discount code for a place called Swiss Chems, which is a site that claims to be a trusted source for high quality research chemicals. And that website sells SARMs, which are injectable wow. steroids. Wow. That's so interesting. I know. It's a really interesting field because there are a lot of, um, so I do this, this place called Next Health, um, which I've, may has gotten her allergies tested there it's a great location i don't have any referral codes Uh, but i do like them because they do like like your blood panels and stuff like that and they do peptide therapy and peptide therapy is one of those ones that's growing really really quickly and i feel like that's a gateway almost into this kind of shit yeah do you know what i mean if you're not peptides if you're not familiar is like they're like amino i'm not a fucking scientist but like amino acid kind of things and like they can help you with cell growth and all this it's naturally produced by your body but a lot of the times you don't have as much of it something like those things like what was the one that they prescribed me bcp 17 or something like that it's pretty basic I don't know. I didn't really think it did anything. I was like, this feels, this feels like a fucking waste of time. Yeah, probably. You know? Everything's uh, a waste of time. not cheap. Let me I tell keep you getting that. advertised like amino lean and all these things. And I'm yeah, like, it's all, it's all these, so all it's these powders a huge, and shit. it's a huge, huge industry yeah. right now that's growing really quickly and it's all legal. Like that all, all that stuff is legal. Right. But then you can obviously go into other areas. I actually really liked athletic greens. Yeah, that's, <laughs> That's just a powder. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's but yeah, a bunch yeah, of yeah. plants, I guess. It's just plants ground up. But yeah, no, I love athletic greens. I really do feel like it makes me not get sick as often. Yeah, I think it's really nice. And I feel like my skin is glowier. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck are we not sponsored by them? We, we are giving re- them a glowing review We should right reach now. out to them. We should send this to them and say, hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I take it in the morning and then sometimes I forget for a few weeks and I'm like, yeah, I feel like <laughs> shit. I feel like shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I almost bought that amino lean just because it was advertised me so much. And then I was like, I need to prove to myself that I can do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like actually stay with. Was that greens. one of the injectable ones or was that like. No, a, no, no. A, it's just a powder. Thing. It's just a powder thing. I think. God, yeah. I do adore a, a mar- placebo. I do a love a placebo. We love a placebo. I adore. And maybe that's what Athletic Greens is. Maybe not. If they sponsor us. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. Um, but um either way i still feel i feel like i feel the impact yeah Yeah. so i'm gonna go to my sad story next so we can end on a more fun topic but okay perfect um so this is really quite a bummer uh trigger warning some murder talk murder talk so there was from steroid talk to murder talk so this is really sad this happened about a week ago um at the point that we're recording a baltimore ceo um, she was the CEO of her name was Pava La Pair. Okay. And um she was CEO of a place called EcoMap Technologies and she was murdered in her home. That so, sucks. I yeah. <laughs> it it sure does. Why can I just why does this keep happening to these tech founders? So is I, it more than usual? I don't know. It It does feel more than usual. It really does. This one, because you had, we had been um, texting about this topic when it first came out, and you were like, "Could it be crypto related?" Because it it feels like there's always yeah. We did an episode a couple weeks, uh, months. I have no idea. I have no sense of time uh, ago about there was like a string of people involved in crypto who got suspiciously murdered. Right. Like murdered. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> but they were all crypto invade like related. And to be fair, crypto does like have a lot of bad actors. In right. It, so, so uh, as far as I can tell, it wasn't related to anything with her business. It was basically just this guy who has since been found. This man, Jason Dean Billingsley, and he was a convicted sex offender who had al- who was already being sought by police as a suspect in a rape, arson, and attempted murder days earlier. Whoa. So, so just a bad guy. I think so. So surveillance um, footage captured her alleged attacker following her into the elevator of her apartment building. They were seen having like a conversation, whatever. and Like then a normal conversation. A normal conversation. Days later, her body was discovered on the roof. Yeah. And it looked like she died of blunt force trauma and strangulation. 
Oh my god! I know. So this guy, did, like, she probably just like let him in the building and was like, I don't know, chatting. Probably with lives him. here, I guess. Chatting with him Jesus in the elevator. Jesus Christ! And then Baltimore, get your shit together. Come on! It's so sad. So she was a part. She was co-founder of this startup called EcoMap Technologies. I went on their website. I cannot for the. I don't know if I'm like too dumb to understand this. I have no idea what they're talking about. Every ecosystem um, available. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> so listen. Li- what do you sell? What do you sell? And so they're like, we're rock stars. You're d- like, what do you mean? I don't. We're get ninjas. This. We're we're coding ninjas. <laughs> I'm like, what do you code though? <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. So our mission: make information accessible. Why? That's the internet. What it information? Says, <laughs> it says EcoMap was founded. <laughs> was founded based on a simple premise. It should be easy to access information about what's happening in the ecosystems all around us. What? We use powerful technology to digitize ecosystems, ensuring everyone can e- can easily access the information they need so ecosystems can be equitable, efficient, and effective. What are you talking about? What does that mean? And what when the- you say ecosystem, I'm going back to third grade where I'm like, the rainforest right. is an ecosystem. The desert is also its own ecosystem. I don't know what she means. We're the ecosystem company. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't get it. Oh, it's a chatbot. Oh, it's a chat bot for like organizations, I guess. I don't know. So it's some sort of like enterprise. I wonder what will happen with this ecosystem platform. I don't know. Well, Christ. Oh, oh God. I feel I feel so bad. But she was like super beloved. And it's really just crazy how random. There she is. There she is. Yeah. Pavel Le- oh, Pair. Chief ecosystem officer. That's so fucking sad. How, I know it's really quite terrible. Obviously, terrible. so I think in this case, and maybe in a few weeks, we'll be proven wrong, like we were when we talked about the um, um, slain CEO in uh in San Francisco. In San Francisco. But at this moment in time, it feels like it's genuinely random, which is really insane. Damn. There's nothing scarier than thinking. The randomness actually yeah, freaks the shit out so of me. So scary. Cause it's, I mean, it's crazy. So, yeah, terrible. Yeah. Not good. Um, so about 40 minutes passed between when he was following her into the elevator and then when he left the building, according to the security footage. Yeah, the and security here's the footage. other crazy part is he knew he was being, like, they're in a building. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's very obvious that he's being video, f- like, like, filmed. Yeah, I mean, I think he's out of his mind. I mean, he's like a true psychopath. Oh. So he was charged with first degree murder, first degree assault, and other charges. Um, he's also facing a first degree attempted murder, attempted second degree murder, and first degree rape, second degree rape, and first degree arson for a September 19th incident um, where basically he was, he like raped somebody. He raped a woman before setting her and her boyfriend on fire. <gasps> yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. And he's, so he's on the run. No, they got him. But, but he, he was, he on, the was on the run prior to... Yeah. He put... What? Yeah. What? Yeah. That is insane. Now imagine the fucking robot cop in Times Square. What are they going to do about it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to point their laser pointers and yeah, be like, hey, be cut like, it out. Hey, no more lighting literal human beings on fire, you you crazy guy. It really All is... All right, back to <laughs> puttering around. My battery's low. This is such like a captain obvious take but i mean it's so insane like that someone can be that evil like someone like there's people out there that just i don't know their their yeah, brains really are their brains are just not brain chose to he chose, he chose to violence he literally chose violence i mean he chose to fucking murder people it's yeah insane. Go, I, all right get him in jail for sure yeah yeah that right um that was a bummer you were 100 percent right yeah not good poor lady i know oh She's running a company. Oh, Damn. My own. I do. Yeah. I mean, I wonder what will happen to the company after. She, I mean, it's really eerie. Yeah. Like, imagine. Sure, like, I mean, they have. They need a new CEO. It's like, were they going to go on LinkedIn and be like, our CEO, the last one we had was murdered in cold blood. Yeah. Hopefully no one's asking follow up questions. Why is the position open? Also, oh, my God, that'd be so tough to come into that role after and be like Yeesh. hey guys we do let's get morale up Woo! We, let's we ecosystem are these egos pizza party <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like <laughs> let's streamline these ecosystems everyone's uh, like what do you mean i'm like i have no idea 
Couldn't tell you. I, I was hoping one of you guys would know. <laughs> yeah. Could not be more confused. Damn. Um, well, RIP to her. That R. is R. really sad. Her. And for her family, obviously. And Baltimore, figure your shit out, okay? I I'm never you- watched <laughs> The Wire, and I need to do that. I feel like that's I've something I have to do in my life. Absolutely. I'm okay. putting it on. All right. Putting it on the list. Okay, great. Oh, are we into Trump beer? Yes. So um, there is a this beer is, brand. This is the kind of story I'm listening. See, I'm, I am listening. Here we go. So there is a beer brand. This is so fucking embarrassing. It is called Ultra Right Beer. <laughs> Let that sink in. Oh, and oh, oh no. Come on. Yep. yep. Ultra Right. So not far right. They're further than Ultra. far right. Ultra yes. Right. So they have record-breaking sales from having a beer that has... Record-breaking from what? They're like, we're a new company, so right. we, we broke a record from zero. <laughs> so they have this beer that has uh, <laughs> that has Donald Trump's mugshot, which honestly is a fucking iconic mug- that, mugshot. That, that mugshot so... does. He did actually nail that. It's, I mean, what I are mean, we the guy's doing a here? fucking like... crazy person, but like, it's crazy. It's very funny. Do you think he did multiple rounds? Yeah, Do you think probably. he submitted his own mugshot? That's funny. He just, I bet he did. He I bet he went on like up. one of those like filters, the AI filters, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> like you look at his iPhone and it's got all of the different mugshots. <laughs> it's like fifty different selfies of him being like, okay, no, just a little more. Mm. <laughs> he's like the Tyra Banks, like the smiles. Smiles. Oh my god. But a little tougher. Conservatives, too, they, like, eat this type of shit up. I feel like they're like, Trump looks pissed. He's about to take back America. Oh, yeah. They don't know what's fucking coming. Let me tell oh, you that. It's he's so like, embarrassing. Mm. He, he's generally, it's like the Zoolander. Yeah. He's going, he's given blue steel. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, limited edition beer is dubbed Conservative Dad's Revenge. So there, there's that. Conservative dads. It they were like, a, listen, we know mom's secretly liberal. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We are aware of that. And it has the company's signature golden lager on the inside. It would be so funny if this beer was like delicious and I just like really liked it. <laughs> I was like, I'm sure it's a light beer. I'm sure it's probably like yeah. an, a label slapped on top of like a Bud Light or yeah. something like that. Like it's, you know, there's, they're all the same. Uh, this is the man behind it. He looks a lot like that guy. Have you been getting advertised? This is another thing that I get on t- TikTok quite a bit. That guy who's from some like um, right wing dating app called The Right Stuff. And no. he's like, you're getting The Right Stuff on TikTok? Yes, constantly. What are you I'm watching? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting this guy Uh-oh. who will be like, a POV you're on a date with a liberal and then they'll like have like four masks on and like take the mask off before they like take a bite or something. I or have whatever. never once that has never once okay. ever come to me. You know what I'm getting? Better help ads. Bet- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that says about either of us. I, didn't, I mean, think they're like, Laura, <laughs> she's not <doing> so good. <laughs> um, but and for you, they're like, May is a uh, questioning thing, <laughs> <laughs> which is fair. You should always question everything. Yeah. But he looks just like the guy in, in the right stuff. I mean, maybe it's the same guy because no, I mean, they're clearly not. fucking running in the same circles. They're running in the same circles, but it's not. They're just like a prototype for what conservative guys look like. And this is exactly what they look like. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad looking guy. I'll be he honest looks with fine. you. He looks yeah. fine. Um, where's he from? Uh, that's a Does good say... question. I'm going to guess. If I had to guess, I'm going to say probably Texas. I'm going to say somewhere random like a Dakota. A Dakota. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like a Montana where he's like. Well, there's nothing better to do here. It's cheap to build a beer. Where's he uh, from? Alpharetta, Georgia. Alpharetta, okay. Georgia. Yeah, that, that I guess tracks. I could have seen that one coming. That tracks. Yeah. Not too far from Atlanta, but far enough <laughs> to the right. I'm so I have no idea. <laughs> each sale defends conservatives against the unconstitutional prosecution by the communist Fulton County District Attorney. Wait, hold on. So this is... It's a fundraising it's, thing? It's a fundraising thing. It goes towards... Oh, they're going to launder money through it. I guess so. <laughs> oh, for, for sure. A hundred percent. They're about to... Yeah. R- Putin just put in a massive order. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's what they're doing with those movies, too. We should maybe talk about that. But I'm... Like, for sure. They're going to do... What they're going to do great. You oh, know those, the like, really bad... Um, conservative movies? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that are, out? like, very Lifetime-esque. Yes. Yeah. And there was that one that broke records for a little while, and I'm... Oh, like Sound of Freedom. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure some people went and saw it, and I maybe it's fine. Probably not. 
<laughs> I've heard it's terrible. Of course. Yeah, from Jordan it, Jensen, friend of the pod. <laughs> uh, but it did really well, and I think it's because the churches were basically laundering tax-free money. Wow. Yeah. Churches don't pay taxes, folks, and then they would buy a bunch of tickets for their um, people, uh, practitioners, <laughs> what do you call churchgoers, yeah. to go and see the movie, and like a lot of them like wouldn't even take the tickets, but they would just <laughs> buy out a theater. Wow. It's tax free, and then that money goes back to conservative, like yeah, the agendas. Or it's whatever. they're laundering money. I bet they're going to do the same thing with this. Yeah. Especially Georgia has a lot going on right now. I do. I just do a politics podcast too. No, I'm not going to do that. No, oh my god, you exhausting. Oh, I'm tired enough as it is. I know business is already dips way too much into politics, and I don't like it. I know, right? But it um, does. It does. Everything genuinely. is politicized. Every, it's, though. Everything is politicized or linked, of course, to politicians because. They be making money. Let me tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> that is a good job if you want some ROI. True. Um, yeah. So they've already hit $1 million in sales, which is pretty good for like a really small brand. Yeah. Well, it's pretty bad if you're trying to launder money for. Yeah. It's not great. It's not that many dollars. <laughs> I'm also completely making this up, but like, am I wrong? No, you're right. You've never been more right. I'm really t- shooting from the earlier hip. on you were you've never been more wrong <laughs> when you said that steaks shouldn't go in the air fryer i said i was like are you crazy <laughs> no i'm i'm i don't know why you think it's crazy it's really good i think it's the best way to have a steak to be honest you will never get a job at maron steakhouse <laughs> i guess not you will not be hired by those 23 year olds <laughs> they're also selling they're selling t-shirts mugs that kind of thing too if you're interested <laughs> if i'm interested oh, okay perfect um, go ahead and sponsor us, right wing beer. I would company. like to try it. I don't want to give them money. So if they want to like I'll try it. I mean <laughs> I'll try anything. I'll try anything. Yeah. Except done. for meth. Can't do except that. For, except for like yeah, except for the drugs that like it's yeah. like a one and done situation. Yeah. Meth, heroin, fentanyl. Fentanyl. But beyond that, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. That is wild. That's it. That's all I got for you guys. That's all you got for me. Um, that was pretty good. Yeah, good we times. had what? What? A, what? A, we had a wholesome story. Then we had we had a murder. a murder. That was really not wholesome. That was the opposite of wholesome. And then we had an ultra right beer. It's great. That's it. That's Hope our- you guys liked. Um, we have some awesome guests that we are have coming up in the next few weeks here. So yeah, tune definitely- in. It's gonna be really exciting. I think you guys. Yeah, are really we're love so it. fired up for some of the stuff we have planned for the pod. So definitely make sure you're telling three friends. Three, three of friends. them. I know you can do it. I know you have three friends. Yes. Tell your mom if you have like siblings. I don't know. And I think this is also like I don't know. This is a slightly shorter episode than normal. So you have like a couple extra minutes in your hand. Hop on the iTunes. Leave us a review. Five stars. Mean things about May, not not about Laura, because Laura has a sensitive bitch. Okay, <laughs> um, and um, and then follow us on YouTube too, and then on Instagram, Risky Bits News, Laura Sogar, May underscore Planner. We love you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.